Welcome to the Youth Caucus session. We are talking a lot about elections throughout the conference and most importantly, how to encourage more people to run, especially young people. We know we have an aging population, but we can't forget there's a lot of active, vocal young people across our province who care about their communities and critical issues such as climate change, equity, accessibility, justice, and many more. There are young leaders around us and among us. Today, I have the great pleasure of speaking with one of those young leaders, Councillor Mallory McGrath. Mallory is a councillor in Branch, a small community along the south coast of the Avalon Peninsula. She became involved in municipal politics at the age of 21 and considers herself to be passionate about rural living and rural development. Growing up, she witnessed firsthand that women could lead in municipal politics and that it was often women's leadership in communities that helped to sustain community activities, whether it be recreational activities, a community garden, church events, etc. Therefore, it's no surprise to her that the town of Branch elected an all-female town council in recent years. Mallory believes that historically it was always women who led communities, both in formal and informal roles. In early 2020, Mallory was selected to represent the Atlantic Council for International Cooperation at the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. Mallory, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a beautiful so, set. I know. It's wonderful here, isn't it? It is. It's very nice. Thank you so much. So as your bio indicates, you were elected to the council and branch when you were 21. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what prompted you to run for municipal politics at that time? Sure. Well, that's a great question. Um, at the time, like I was 21, not all that long out of high school, doing university, that sort of stuff. I was working part-time in my community as a reporter for this local newspaper based out of Placentia. Uh, the newspaper was the charter that some people may recall in the region. So I worked part-time there and in covering events in communities, talking to people, you know, you kind of get to know what's happening in your community or better yet, what's not happening in the community. Mm. Um, so that had kind of, you know, planted that little seed there of, well, maybe I should get involved if I'm passionate about this. And also at the time, we didn't have high-speed internet, so we had dial-up internet. So that was something I was so passionate about. And every time I would see a counsellor in the community, I would say, you know, are we advocating for high-speed internet? What's happening there? Um, I was involved, I guess. I wanted to get involved with that lens. I guess the big tipping point for me in getting involved was there was this um, special event that happened in the region that the Rural Secretariat under the Office of Public Engagement did at the time around that year. It was a community media event basically and it was all about participatory action in communities, people coming together, having discussions, encouraging dialogue in rural. So I became involved there through my time as a reporter. And one thing led to another, and I became passionate about these community events, what wasn't happening in the community, wanted to get involved. Um, a friend of mine, also a cousin, because, you know, we're all related mm. in a small community, was the mayor at the time. There was a by-election came up when an individual resigned, and I just went for it, and nobody else ran at the time. So I was elected um, that day, and it's been... The rest is history, as they say. <laughs> and did you get, uh, how did you fare with the broadband? We did get it, yeah, okay. a little while later. So it was probably a couple of years. Um, I know the MHA at the time, Felix Collins, I think I emailed him every day. Um, and he was great, but it did get sorted. We did get high-speed internet okay. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been almost 10 years since that time, and you say the rest is history. Mm -hmm. uh, you've spent most of your 20s as a municipal leader. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's that been like for you? Um, it's certainly been interesting. Uh, you certainly learn a lot about governance in mm -hmm. that time. You learn a lot about your community, individuals in your community. I never thought I could understand how the width of water line pumps or water lines impact the flow of water that somebody gets on a hill and so you learn stuff like that really quickly, I find. And I was really fortunate to have other councillors 
and our municipal town clerk just be such a wealth of knowledge to spread that information to me. So you learn a lot, you learn on your feet, you know, you could be at the store just checking your postal mail and somebody says to you, well, what about this water line or, you know, what have you, any sorts of town issues. And I mean, it was interesting. I did um, a lot of my university um, degrees online, so I was home a lot and you know, I would be studying, doing exams and have to go to a council meeting or have to go make an appearance at a community event at the hall on a Saturday morning, something like that. So you definitely, I'm really, really fortunate to have had that experience and I still enjoy it a lot today because, you know, you see your community in a different light when you're involved in that capacity and you appreciate it so much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You appreciate the services and the flowing water and the lights at the intersections in the community because you know that you, you know, you made a motion for that or you stopped something from happening or something like that. So it's been an experience for sure and I'm very fortunate for it. Yes, I I overheard uh, Hope Jameson saying on the radio one time recently uh, that she'd never look at a piece of concrete the same. Exactly. And I think it's poignant to think about how we see infrastructure. And, mm -hmm. and to your point and to hers, I think, you know, when, when you're involved, you certainly see everything with right. a different light, right? Right. So I was driving somewhere last week in St. John's and it might have been Water Street or downtown and I could see water flowing. And I was like, oh, the water's broken somewhere. <laughs> Town's got a beer. <laughs> it could have been up around Bishop Field, perhaps. Yeah, I think it might have been around that time. Yep, yep. <laughs> there was a there was a pipe bursting. We're on that story as well, so keep, stay tuned. I will. Um, any notable moments over that time, this these, this past time that stick out to you? Um, there's been a couple. There's been um, you know all of our council meetings certainly are not peaceful. We definitely mm. disagree with each other and respectfully disagree. I'd like to say. I've had some interesting conversations with constituents and communities uh, when, you know, the town just can't, you know, get something towards how they like it. Like, you know, we can't make everybody happy at the one right. time, essentially. So, you know, there's always been interesting conversations and, you know, I've attended a lot of m and events over the years and just the people I've met at those events, people in similar roles like myself who love rural, want to stay rural, they're involved mm -hmm. in their communities. I don't know if I'd be able to pick a particular event. Probably the day we got high speed internet was a big one. Um, you know, there's been celebrations and events in the community that I've been really proud to be a part of. Um, there's been times when I've been really happy to speak about my experience in capacities such as these. So there's just so many mm -hmm. uh, like opportunities and so many venues for discussion about rural and communities when you're involved in that capacity and I wouldn't be able to pick one event. Yeah. It's a repertoire. It's a repertoire, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's an experience for sure. <laughs> in your bio and also in a 2017 article in the Toronto Star on, mm. on Branch's all-female council, sure. you reflected upon being in local politics as a woman in Branch. Uh -huh. I wonder if you could share some more of those reflections here because I think it's very important. Yeah, so a lot of people who know me and have asked me similar questions, you know, women in politics can be, you know, a, a heated discussion point sometimes. My argument has always been that women have always run rural communities and communities in general. So if you look back historically, you see that a lot of the predominant roles, like the nurses, the midwives, the church organizers, all those people were female and they led these events in communities. And of course, even if you want to look back even further to when um, salting fish was such a big deal and it was yeah. the women who were doing that work on the flakes. So women have always been in leadership roles, I feel like. And my theory in what happened in Branch is that in the early 90s with the Cod Moratorium, a lot of the men actually left the community to find work elsewhere or became seasonal employees. And the women then took over the formal roles on right. the town council. So I'm 30 years old. I was born in 1990. Um, in my history in Branch, there's always been a female mayor and there's always been a female presence on the town council. So to me, women in municipal politics wasn't a foreign concept. Yeah. It wasn't something that even crossed my mind when I considered running uh, in that by-election in 2011. Well, I'm female, they probably won't elect me. And I feel like a lot of people don't believe that because it's such an anomaly yeah. that 
you know, sometimes your gender does hold you back in running for that role. So I guess I'm fortunate in a way or naive or something that my gender didn't influence my decision to run in municipal politics. And what I'm hearing is that because of that long history, it was so normalised, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, I mean, I've never been shunned for being a woman in the town council. And, you know, I don't think any of my colleagues have either. I think that it's something that the town was used to because we had yeah. it for so long. It's part of your community. It's part of being rural. And the women lead. Mm. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes, I think, for people to understand that. <laughs> and I don't, and I think in, in communities, perhaps it hasn't translated in the same way mm -hmm. always to municipal politics. Sure. I mean, we're still at, sure. I think, 25% of candidates are women mm -hmm. across the province. Um, mm -hmm. No, actually 30%. Right. It's a little, a little higher than that. And 25% are mayors. Yeah. Uh, so female mayors. Yeah. My thoughts, I guess, on it is an anomaly in itself, or Branch having an all-town council is a bit of an anomaly, an all-town council that are female, sorry, yeah. is a bit of a foreign concept. Right. Because I remember the night that all women was elected, I believe it might have been the 2015 or 14 election, um, like the election was over for hours before I realized, oh, we have an all-female town council. Actually, I think I read it on Twitter, because St. John's had elected... Um, a lot of men and not so many women at that time and there was like a meme circulating and I was like oh yeah it is all female <laughs> I swear to god that's true <laughs> so you've had a lot of experience mm -hmm. you've got a particular approach and, and thinking around that experience that you've shared with us today what's your advice to other young people in terms of getting involved in municipal politics sure um, I feel like I always felt like I was a part of the larger community in what was happening. I remember as a small kid, my mom or my dad taking me to community events. So in the 90s, of course, there was a lot of fish plant closures, closures in rural communities. Mm. I remember being in a town hall meeting. Um, I remember even vividly my feet weren't even touching the floor. So that's how little I was. And there was discussions happening all around me about the closure of the fish plant and you know, this rah, rah, rah moment. And I'm, I feel very fortunate now to have had that experience. And ironically, there was women at the front of the room have, holding that meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, I feel like I was introduced to it at a very young age. My parents always took me, um, you know, to wait outside for them while they voted. You know, I feel like I always knew what was on the go with the town council. Not that I understood it fully at the time, but, you know, I feel like my parents tried to involve me in the community. I remember 6 o'clock um, at our house, the news was on. Even if you were doing your homework, well, the news is on. Sit down and watch the news, do your homework later. So, you know, I'm very thankful to my parents and my upbringing to have exposed me to that. So, you know, I feel like your involvement in your community can start really young, and then it'll grow as you get older, obviously. But just because, you know, if you move to a new community tomorrow, that doesn't mean you can't get involved, obviously. Right. But I do think you have to have that interest and you have to realize that, you know, you're a part of this community, you belong here, you have a place here, you have a place at the table at the town council chambers um, if you want it. I do know that there is a statistic out there that it's not that women don't win when they enter an election, it's that they don't run. Yeah. So when they do run, they win. So, you know, for young people who want to get involved, you know, and I guess it sounds easy enough for me to say just do it. But, I mean, you have to start somewhere, whether it's running for town council, getting involved in a school council or a church group or, you know, whatever opportunity there is in your community. And if there is no opportunity, then create it, start something. Yeah. Take on that leadership role because I think women are natural leaders. And I think the others will follow. Yeah. This. So get involved. Yeah, get involved, essentially. And, you know, I think we all naturally want to be involved. We want to see change, a lot of us. You know, if you're passionate about social justice or even anything in your community, like even getting high-speed internet was something I was passionate about. You know, I feel like we would all want to either change something or improve something in our communities, whether you're concerned about speeding or stoplights. You know, there's always conversations to be had, room for discussion. 
And I think there is a bit of a sway starting to happen that women are becoming more interested and are starting to run for municipal politics. Um, and hopefully we'll start to see more of that shift. I think actually over my almost 10 years now in municipal politics, when I started going to MNL events, I think there's been an increase actually in the amount of women and young people that are at these events. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, when I started going to these events, there was a lot of, you know, white, bald men, sorry Brad if he's here. <laughs> um, and, you know, which is fine, but there, there has been an influx of more women and young people that are coming into the room, and, you know, it's a great thing, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and we're definitely seeing our, our M&L family broaden, I think, definitely, you know, and there's, there's a lot of folks, and certainly at this conference even, there's a lot mm -hmm. of different voices, and, and it's, it's good to see, and right. I think everyone is welcoming of that for sure. Definitely, and I think you know, even if you run and you're not successful, then you've put yourself out there, you've had that opportunity, you've gained that, that experience to then apply again in the next election or apply at another capacity in the community. So, I mean, there's no losses to be had, I feel like. What do you have to lose? Yeah, and, and I think you know, something that I've thought about is and don't be afraid to fail. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I don't think there is failure to be had there. Yeah. Because exactly. you're talking to people, whether you're knocking on doors or getting Facebook messages, you're talking, you're learning, you're becoming aware of the issues, so you're just gaining. I exactly. Feel like. So it's not really failure, it's just no. learning. You put it out there, you've yeah. got that experience that you can share, it's fabulous. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's the, the most important question, I think. We've got an election coming up next year. We do, we do. Will you run again? That is a very interesting question. Right now, I would say yes. Um, things have changed. I mean, things have changed a lot since I was 21. Mm -hmm. I've gotten, you know, finished university and all that good stuff. Um, I do find myself working in St. John's, but I'm in branch as much as I possibly can. I think I am going to run. We'll see what happens. I mean, life changes so quickly on a dime. Who knows? Mm. Um, but for right now, I would say that I will be a 10 plus municipal councillor. Okay, and is there anything else before we, we head out here uh, that you wanna share with folks who are listening? Um, no, I mean, I do wanna thank you for the opportunity and thank m and I think m and is such a fabulous resource for communities, whether it's Branch or Torbay. Uh, I think m and has something for every community really, or even just a networking opportunity alone is so fabulous. Uh, I know that our mayor, Kelly Power, has registered to attend this event, um, and I know she thoroughly enjoys them, whether she's talking about branch or getting information on how to get a fire truck, which she did. Um, this fabulous event. So thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing the AGM online and just continuing to be a part of the m &L family. Fabulous. Well, thank you again for taking the thank time so to speak much. with us. I know you're very busy, and uh, I appreciate this. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks.